ladies and gentlemen, boys, and welcome to <laughs> episode seven. Oh, I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. I've been, I was on a roll. I was on such a roll. Episode 70. Five. Oh, I said 75 last week. That's why I got confused. It was 74 last week. This week is 75. All right. Welcome to episode 75 of the Speared Sundays podcast. And uh, I want to give you uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a teaser, a taste, uh, a sense of what is to come at the end of this podcast. Uh, I'm not going to do it at the start because I don't know, Uh, but I'll do it at the end. I am finally ready to reveal this big thing that I've been working on. I'm going to talk about it at the end of the end of this podcast and I'm going to fully reveal it on Tuesday. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about it now because it's going to be a fucking big thing, but uh, stay tuned for the end of the podcast if you give a fuck and I'm going to talk about the thing. All right. Now, Let's talk about some shit that really doesn't matter. I was on Facebook, literally just just now, right? I was on Facebook and uh, a viral video popped up in my feed and I was like, oh, this has a lot of views. I bet, I, I bet it's going to be good. might make me lol. <laughs> I might enjoy this, all right? So it's a, it's a video posted by fucking... Here, who is it posted by? I'm just looking at... By Emirates, the, the plane chain. Plane chain? What do you call what do you call a plane chain? Ah, oh, what am I fucking saying? A plane, I, dude. Every time I I I'm, I know what it's I know what the word is. Plane business. <laughs> What's it called? The plane chain, plane airline. I'm thinking of an airline. Okay, so Emirates. Ah, oh, that's going to be the topic of the fucking podcast group for the next week. I bet. Ugh. Plane chain. Just get it on Jetstar. My favorite plane chain. Oi, how shit's Tiger? Worst plane chain of all time. Cunts, all right? Anyway, so I looked at uh, Emirates, the plane chain, uh, posted a video on Facebook. Five million views. I'm like, oh, here we go. This is going to be good. Because really, if I'm... It's a mobile phone video of footage of something happening on a plane. Now, when I watch a mobile phone video of something happening on a plane, I am expecting some... A fight. I I, want to see... Some really racist shit, and a, and a and a, like a woman being super racist, and then getting kicked off the plane for it. Uh, or I want to see a fight, or I want to see a psycho doing some crazy shit, or demanding unrealistic things, getting kicked off the plane. All right, that's the only three types of videos I want to see. If it's mobile phone inside a plane, I want to see a fight. I want to see a racist bitch get kicked off the flight, or I want to see a crazy cunt get kicked off the flight. I don't want to see this. So Emirates, the plane chain, <laughs> posted this, and it is the Bailey University men's choir singing a song on a fucking plane. Like when they had when they had landed. So it's it's at the end. Emirates is they don't fuck around, right? They do big long haul flights. This could be at the end of a six hour flight. And what does this fucking men's choir decide to do? There's 30 of the cunts. They go, hey, you know, you know what would be good at the end of a long haul flight? You know, you know what would be nice? You know what would be considerate to all the other passengers who just want to get the fuck off the plane? How about we sing a five minute song about coconuts? And I, I just want you to imagine, before I play this shit, imagine you've been on a plane for six hours, you're fucking sweaty, you're shitty, you got no leg, you haven't had leg room. You might have deep vein thrombosis. All you want to do is stand up, get your fucking bag, and get off the plane. And then all of a sudden, 30 dudes, 30, okay, it's a men's choir in the university, okay? So these are men that have gotten all the way through primary school, all the way through high school, and then all the way through university, and they haven't realized that being in a choir is gay as fuck. <laughs> So you can imagine the types of dudes, like it's not, it, it's not a, it's not an aesthetically pleasing performance, all right? So just imagine that 30 soon to be 40 year old virgins stand up and they just start belting this out after a six hour flight. Coconuts, 
and they're dancing too. They're singing about fucking coconuts. Dude, who wants to hear this shit after a six hour flight? Save it for the stage, you fucking singing nerds. Do you know what? I'd be, I'd be right at the back being like, shut the fuck up. I don't care about coconuts. All right? Let me off the plane. Fuck your harmonizing. Fuck your shitty dance moves. All right? If you're going to have dance moves, hire dancers. Don't get the singers to do it. You either be a singer or you be a dancer or you could be someone who can do both. Don't be some cunt in a choir that does a couple of hand motions and they think that's a dance. Let me off the plane. Dude, I would 100%, if I was in this scenario and I was a Muslim dude, I would just start screaming in Arabic and get the plane evacuated. I'd go to jail for that, just knowing that the plane would be evacuated so fast that everyone would thank me. Like on the way out, if, if some... Oh my God. Oh, I'm reading the captions. It was a thank you performance from the choir to our crew. For what? What do they do? They give you a fucking cup of water? Huh? A, do they give you a packet of peanuts, you fucking nerds? Have you never seen a pretty looking woman in your life? The first time you see a fucking airline hostess, you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna sing a song. Meanwhile, the air hostess is in this video. They're standing right at the front of the plane fucking awkwardly. They want to get off the plane too, right? They've got just like 30 sweaty nerds singing about fucking coconuts. And you know one of these cunts is going to ask the air hostess. It's still going. You know one of these cunts is going to ask the air hostess, by the way, can I get your phone number? And she's going to go, <laughs> get the fuck off the plane, coconut boy. Oh, I can't. Dude, this, uh, okay, no shit. That's, that's halfway through the video. I can't. Every time I look at it, I just imagine myself on that fucking flight and I lose my mind. Like, what is this shit with spontaneous performances? I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to be going about my business, right? The, the last thing that I want is a spontaneous performance. Has anyone in history ever thought, like, when they're... Because this shit, all right, spontaneous performances, they always happen in the worst place for a performance. They happen in a fucking plane. Or they happen in a train station, or they happen in a library, or they happen in a classroom, or just something, someplace incredibly public where people go and they can't leave. So these fucking spastics be like, oh my god, how surprising would it be for everybody else if 30 people just started dancing? Then everyone around us would be like, oh, what? I thought they were strangers. Oh man, this is a mate. No, no one thinks that. All right? Everyone thinks I am going to be late for work today. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. Let me off the fucking plane. I'm just trying to study. That's the only shit that people think. There'll be two cunts standing there with mobile phones filming it for Facebook. And, and they're probably associated with the flash mob. Dude, I have never once thought when I'm going about my day. Do you, you know what would be good right now? A flash mob. That would that'd just, that'd just make my day. A fucking flash mob. I'd be walking through a train station and then all of a sudden everyone would freeze and Michael Jackson's thriller starts coming on. And it's like, oh, cool. Michael's going to be turning over in his grave again as we watch a whole bunch of 30-year-old white nerds in fucking university choir sing thriller with their cheap red leather jackets that they got from an op shop for 200 bucks. Save that shit for the stage. Rehearse at home. Don't bring your fucking shit talent into my life. Not into it. I've never once thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to start doing a comedy show at the fucking train station. Because I know that nobody wants to hear that. Like, there's only so... There's only... There's only two kinds of people that are, like, up themselves enough to do a flash mob, and that's cunts in the choir and cunts who study dance because you're never, you're never going to, I'm sorry, you're never going to be a famous dancer. It doesn't happen. There's no such thing as a famous dancer. All right? There's fucking Justin Bieber. He can dance, but he's not a, he's not a dancer. Do you know what I mean? He's like a, he's like a, a singer, a pop star that can dance. 
It never goes the other way around, does it? Like there's not some incredible dancer and then they teach them how to sing. Nah, it's always an incredible singer and they teach them how to dance. That's why there's so many dance cunts walking around being like, oh, I just want to, I, I just want to be famous, but the only way I can get attention online is by twerking with no clothes on or doing the fucking robot. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have to do a flash mob for people to pay attention to me and give a fuck. That's what it is. It's dance cunts and choir cunts are sick of standing at the back of the stage because they're the most uninteresting part of whatever the, whatever they're involved in. Like, 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 dude, no one's going to a dance show. <laughs> Oh, the incredible fucking hip-hop dancers. Sarah Stage is coming. We've got to go see her live. No one's doing that. Oh, look, it's the... It's the Mary Jane's female choir of America. We've got to come see them sing their songs and fucking listen to those. Please hope, listen to some harmonies, hey? I'll, I'll get tickets. You just you pay you pay me you pay me, da- you pay me back. Right, I'll get four tickets. We'll go as a group and we'll let's just let's just see some harmonising. <laughs> no one's doing that. So the only way these poor bastards can get any shine is by interrupting other people's days and forcing them to look at them. Because the uh, you know what it is it'd be it'd be just like open mic comedy, where the only only people you'd be performing to are other performers. Like, so often when I go and do a comedy night, the, o- the audience is just full of comedians and they're just sitting there judging you. Oh, I'm better than that. Oh, I'm funnier than that. Oh, that was an obvious punchline. Just that, just that all night, right? But it, it'd be like that, but the fucking choir version. Oh, that's a shitty falsetto. I can sing higher than that. Oh, you, oh yeah. You guys are doing some hand motions. Fucking... I can bend my knee a little bit in my little choir boy dress. <laughs> You'd have the rivalries. Like you got the fucking, I don't know, the, the, the Monash men's choir. Thinking of an animal that starts with the Monash men's choir cats versus like the St. John's Catholic blowjob boys. <laughs> and they'd meet up and they'd sing. And then there's fucking four judges that just have to sit there and be like, because how do you, how do you honestly, like truly, how do you get, how, how do you, how are you a better choir? Huh? Like, they, like on, the, on an individual level, one singer can smash another singer because, I don't know, maybe they can dance too or play the guitar as well. Or it turns out, oh, fuck, they can rap. That's cool. Like, they can do another thing. But if it's just choir, like, if you're a, you're a choir of 30 dudes, chances are maybe one of you can dance. The rest of you can't. Maybe one of you can rap. The rest of you can't. I mean, the only thing you'd have in common is none of you can get laid. So... <laughs> So how do you win? What makes a better choir, huh? Hey, no, oh, that that those guys out choir the other one. Well, what makes a better oh, dancing? I guess is kind of like you could really impress someone with with dance moves, doing flips and death defying shit. You could top another dance crew, but I don't understand how you win a fucking choir competition, dude. That's it. I'm going to look up choir competition judging criteria. Dude. Oh, they have choral competition rules. <laughs> Imagine being the cunt. This is like a fucking... It's a two-page document. Okay. Imagine being the cunt whose job it is to sit down and write this... Two. It probably just says you... Okay, here's the judging criteria. All right, you ready? So there's three categories where this is how you, this is how you win a choir competition. Category one: 
musicianship. I can't even read it. It's just funny. Imagine caring about this. <laughs> okay. Technical ability in music. That makes sense. Including intonation, phrasing, pitch, dynamics, diction, and ensemble singing. And then in brackets, how well the group sings together. <laughs> You know, the cunt who's writing this rule book is sitting there and the first thing he thought of was like, well, I don't know, you just pick the, whoever's better. Right? Whoever sings the best. And then he put in all these other bullshit fucking technical terms, intonation, phrasing, pitch. But that's all. Like no, one, like no judge is sitting there being like, gee, their intonation was good, but I don't know about that phrasing. <laughs> All right, so, okay, um, so the, that's the first category, music, musicianship, and that's only 60% of the score. So actual singing ability, that's only 60%. What the fuck is the rest? All right. Oh, man. I can't, this choir shit's going to kill me. I've just decided I'm never going to edit that out anymore. I used to. I can't be fucked anymore. All right. Okay, so there's musicianship and then there's presentation, which includes memorization. <laughs> if you know the words, how is that? A, why do you even have to write that down? No, surely no. What choir is rocking up and nobody knows the words? Well, is it going to be like when I hear, if, whenever I hear a song I like on the radio and you sing half of it and then fucking mumble the rest? It's raining man, hallelujah, it's raining man, amen, and, uh, 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 it's right, like that shit, do you reckon a choir's ever done that, alright, presentation includes memorization, stage presence, what do you mean stage presence, it's 30 cunts standing still on a stage, there's no room for any presence, a cappella singing, accompaniment, and how accompanying musicians are featured. So, so if your tuba player fucks up, you lose 30% of your score. Never trust a tuba cunt, all right? So that's presentation, that's 30%. And then interpretation. Liturgical hymns are sung or chanted with an appropriate style. Folk songs are sung with an appropriate traditional style. So you can't even innovate. Like if you if you switch up a folk song and turn it into like DMX's Where the Hood At, you're going to lose 10% of your score. So no wonder choir, no one gives a fuck about choir because you can't change it, it at all. And you get a maximum of 12 minutes for your performance and if you go over that, you start losing points. So it's because so even the judges are like, "Oh, I can't listen to more than 12 minutes of this shit." <laughs> And that's all of the rules. So basically, it was just a really fancy way of saying, yeah, I don't know, whoever sings better. Fucking quiet cunts. All right, anyway, so what, what else have I done this week? I'm, I'm over the coconuts on the plane. Just don't, just don't do a flash mob. If you ever thought about doing it, don't, all right? Where's my charger? Plug this shit in. Oh, I got into a bit of a fucking beef, didn't I? Uh, I got into a bit of a beef with uh, Aussie Man Reviews a couple days ago. Uh, the Lou review for that will actually be up sometime tonight uh, or Monday. But um, yeah, so basically what happened is uh, Aussie Man Reviews, he's that Facebook page that he talks over the top of viral videos and for whatever reason he has 6 million likes on Facebook. Like that's... Well, no, it does make sense. Like, I understand why he's that popular, because he only posts videos that have already gone viral. Dude, he's like, he's like the audio version of fucking SoFlo Antonio. Like, that's the level of, of creative input he has into his videos. 
Like everyone, like everyone out there is just watching his shit on mute, being like, "Oh, look, it's a cat fucking playing with another cat." And then you, the moment you turn the volume on, it's it's him going, eh, "There's another cat pun- punching on with a cat, cunt fuck." And hooroo! Uh, I'm Aussie Man Reviews. Support me on Patreon. <laughs> Um, so, but anyway, I didn't care about that. I didn't care about that at all. Uh, if he wants to repost other people's content without crediting them and talk over the top of it, because at the end of the day, as shit as it, as it is, it's still fair use. Do you know what I mean? But then he used one of my videos. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't take my shit without crediting me. All right. So what do you, what, what else he does is, um, he fucking he does these uh he does those videos right that he uploads to Facebook where he'll he'll just download whatever's trending on Reddit, talk over the top of it, explaining what's currently happening in the video, and then put it on Facebook. Okay, cancer, but that doesn't make money because it's Facebook views. You don't make anything off Facebook, so he's got to post clickbait too. So he's he's got his own clickbait website with heaps of articles written up, and it's basically the same thing but with text. And he doesn't write them. He's, he's paid a whole bunch of writers. Dude, imagine being the writer for Aussie Man Reviews website. <laughs> you, the job criteria would be, uh, yeah, hates yourself and absolutely no ambition in the writing field. No, no feeling and soul or passion left behind what you do. Just type in a way that sounds vaguely Australian and I'll give you 20 bucks an article. And articles are the same thing, right? So he, what he'll do is he'll take, he, he took my vaccine video and he took it and he put it in an article and then there's like, no joke, about five paragraphs that just explain what happens in the video in an, expla- in, in an Australian way. And then there's just ads, 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 and then all the way at the bottom, there's my YouTube video, and then you can hit play. Like, it's the type of article where you just fucking scroll straight to the bottom and watch the video. Now, I didn't really care that he did that, because he used, like, he embedded my YouTube thing. Um, So I did get views for it. But the problem with those clickbait things is people, like, um, people watch them on their phones, but it's almost impossible to then subscribe to that person if you like them. So you get views, but there's almost no way to keep those people if they like your shit. Um, Because the way that Facebook's thing works is you click his shitty clickbait, it opens up within Facebook, and then you scroll down to it, and then if you want to click on the YouTube video, that then opens up within the clickbait article, and then if you want to subscribe to that person, you got to sign into your YouTube account. Like, no one's going to do that shit. So... I saw that. I wasn't that mad that he that he did that because at the end of the day, I did get views, but I wanted a way to retain those people so they could check out my other shit, right? Bit of, bit of back and forth there. If you're going to make money out of my fucking content, the least you can do is tag my page on Facebook. So I commented on the thing. Really nice thing. I wasn't mad at all. I was like, hey, guys, thanks. To, I said something like, he's deleted the post, but I said something along the lines of, hey, guys, glad you enjoyed the video. Um, if you want to see more of my shit, check out my page here. Also, Aussie man, could you please tag me in the in the post? Uh, he ignored that, so I was like, oh, okay, all right, cool, no worries, mate. That's cool, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Went about my day, and then uh, people started tweeting me about it. You guys, hey, Aussie man, reviews put you in a thing and he didn't tag you. So I was like, you know what? Still don't care that much. I don't mind. Happens all the time gonna be nice. And I tweeted at him. And all I said was, no tag, question mark. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, it's fine. I didn't have a go at him. Wasn't mean. And then he responded with, don't make me cyber bully you. Cool. Awesome. Okay, fine. That's cool. No worries. I don't mind. All right? You want to respond to my very reasonable request with being a smart ass? Keep pushing it, mate. Keep pushing it, see what happens. I don't care. So I gave him one more chance. I was like, you know what? I don't mind. One more. I'll give him one more. And uh, I retweeted him. And I said, if you're going to make money off my content by putting it in your clickbait, the least you can do is tag my page in the post. Right? Not very, not, not mean. Not having a go. Just stating what's happening. I didn't have a go. 
I just responded with a fair, even tone. I was controlling myself. And then he responded with, LOL. Trolling a troll proved too easy then, mate. Was taking the piss based on your cyberbully title. And that's when I went, all right, gloves are off, cunt. I'm going to bully you. <laughs> so I said, didn't know reposting with no credit or permission for cash was trolling, but stealing an entire concept from Alex Williamson worked, so why not? And then all hell broke loose and he just started losing his shit because everyone just went, oh, he said it. Because that's the thing with Aussie Man Reviews is he stole his whole fucking concept from Alex Williamson. Back in 2014, Alex Williamson released a video called something like Bogan Aussie Commentates the World Cup. It was for soccer. And what it was is it's what exactly what Aussie Man does. The only difference is it was actually funny. Like there were actually jokes in it. Alex Williamson didn't just say what was happening in a silly accent. He actually wrote some really good jokes. Hilarious, right? And then I think it's if you go on his YouTube channel, Aussie Man Reviews, you go to like oldest. He used to make movie reviews in an Australian accent, whatever. That's at least kind of original. But about two or three months after Alex Williamson put out that Bogan Aussie commentating thing, you know what? Aussie Man Reviews came out with the Bogan Aussie commentating the AFL. And then he's going, oh fuck, I'm onto something here. And that's, then he switched all of his content to only do that. And then he moved it away from sport and started commentating already viral videos. Perfect fucking combination to just go nuts on Facebook because everybody watches shit on silent. And the and international audiences are obsessed with Australian culture. Or not so much Australian culture, but more... The more the idea of what they think Australian culture is, which is, oh, fucking Outback, you know, whatever that fucking movie was. What was it? Not Kangaroo Jack. The, the one with the cunt in it. That's not a knife. This is a knife. You know, fucking <laughs> Dungaroo Joe. <laughs> I don't know what it's fucking called. What's it called? Outback Jack. That's not what it is. It's the one with Paul Hogan in it. Dude, how can I quote the movie and I know the main actor, but I don't know the title? That doesn't make sense. What the fuck is that? I'm going to look it up. Paul Hogan movie. Paul Hogan. Yeah, I'm looking at it. Ah, Crocodile Dundee. What did I say? Dungaree Joe. (laughs) That doesn't make sense. All right. But you know you know what I'm saying? Like, people are obsessed with the whole I- idea of what they think Australia is, and he just plays straight into that, and then real Australians look at it and go, yeah, you just copied Alex Williamson, you fucking dog. This is not funny. Write some jokes or shut up. Um, so, yeah, I said that on Twitter, and then uh, he just shit his pants. He was like, ah, fuck. I don't know what I'm playing with here. I think I've stepped in something that I shouldn't have stepped in. And then he just started going, he started tweeting, because all these people started tweeting him and being like, oh, you're fucked, mate, you're fucked. Oh, you stole some shit. And then he starts going, I don't understand. I gave him credit in the article. I embedded his thing. He gets lots of views. I'm doing him a favor. Saying all that kind of shit, like, like you making money off me and not doing the bare minimum, which is tagging my page. Like, like that's a favor. That's the whole thing of when, when someone comes, oh, do you want to do a gig for me for free? You'll get some exposure and I'll make money out of it. It's like, yeah, good on you, cunt. It's like that kind of shit. But then, uh, because of the reaction of, from my tweet, he goes, uh, (laughs) well, this has turned into a massive misunderstanding. Whatever, bud, you're on a strange high horse all of a sudden. Deleted the post. And then I said, delete your page next. (laughs) Checkmate. I'm playing 5D chess with this fucking dropkick. And yeah, so that was my little fucking Twitter beef with Aussie Man Reviews. And I'm going to cover it more in depth in the Lure Review, which should be out tonight or tomorrow. Um, But you you know what it is? I should have done this video ages ago. As soon as he took that video from Alex Williamson and took his concept and started running with it, I should have done it. You know what really sucked? was when Alex Williamson, I think it was, or it might have been this year or last year, he did another Bogan Aussie commentating sport, and it was hilarious. It was so funny, and it was like the fifth one that he's done, and so many comments were saying, oh, you're copying Aussie Man reviews. 
Like that, that's how similar it is. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so similar that now because Aussie man is bigger, people think that Alex is copying him when Alex is the fucking dude who made it up and created it and put effort into it and made it hilarious. And then this fucking McDonald's, it's like the dude who invented the burger and then on o- overcomes McDonald's. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that video will be up um, later. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and as soon as Alex Williamson liked my tweet, he sent me a fucking big apology on, on in Twitter DMs. And I'm like, you know what you were doing. You're only apologizing now because you know what's coming and you Googled me. Don't be a snake, you fucking... I don't know that I, it's like it's like, dude. Just because you apologize to me for being an absolute asshole when I reasonably ask for you to just just tag my page, I didn't want to do this. I don't want to make this video. All I wanted was a fucking tag. But you know, I, that's not, you know that what comes around goes around, man. If you go around stealing people's shit, you go around copying people's concepts and doing it for ages and making heaps of money out of it, and then you start being an asshole to people who are the reason why you're making money. It's what happens, you know? Because he doesn't credit any of the people that he up, re-uploads stuff. He doesn't fucking tag anybody in the post. Or when he does, the tag is wrong and it's credited to some massive company. So fuck him, you know? Um, <clears throat> you'll see in the video. What else happened to me? Oh, I've been at the Comics Lounge. Um, been hanging out with Frenchie a little bit. I recorded a podcast with Frenchie, actually, uh, who, was, <laughs> who was quite enjoying this little Twitter beef that was going on. He saw it all in, in uh, real time. Uh, and that's another thing. All of the other, all of the other Australian creators, we all, we all saw it happen. We saw the guy take the concept, and then we saw it get out of hand. And then, yeah. So you know, everybody in Australia knows what he's done. It's just the international audience that are fooled. But yeah. So I was hanging out with Frenchie. He was down. He was doing a couple of spots at the lounge. So I was hanging out at the lounge, and I saw him perform. And man, he's great. Like live, he's he's so good. His stage presence is just like when I see him go on stage, and um. Because our, our our material, what we joke about is, <clears throat> I think, very, very different. But the, re- the reaction that we cause is quite similar, which is, oh, fuck, I don't know if I'm allowed to laugh at this. Like, he'll do a lot more. Um, I'll, do, I'll do really dark humor and I'll make fun of horrible things and I'll talk about social issues that maybe you shouldn't make fun of or white people shouldn't talk about kind of thing. Whereas he'll <clears throat> he'll do the like the, the sex stuff that's that's um, that. That if you didn't do properly, everyone will be like, oh, you're a fucking sexist kind of shit. So our material is quite different, but the reaction that we provoke is very similar, which is people um, can, often can pull back and be like, oh, fuck, I don't know if I'm allowed to laugh at this. Uh, this might get me in trouble. Is this sexist? Is, is this racist? I don't know. You know, that kind of shit. <clears throat> and uh, seeing him get on stage at the lounge especially because it was not his audience. They don't like, they've got no idea what to expect. It's just a comedian coming out and do 10 minutes. He just fucking owned the stage for 10 minutes. And I was like, wow, that's great. You know, it, it really made me go, oh man, I need to work on my presence kind of thing. Like, I love that when I, when you see another comedian and, and you just go, fuck, they're doing that better than me. I need to work on that kind of thing. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just good seeing people that are, that are better than you in, in some way. Um, and so that was really good. I, if, if you ever get the chance to see Frenchie, I really recommend it. But um, what, was, what was quite interesting is uh, Dave Hughes was headline. <clears throat> Who's, if you're not Australian, if you're Australian, you know him. But if you're not, he's basically, he's basically Australia's Louis C.K. Like he's the king of Australian comedy. Undoubtedly, whether you like him or you don't, he is absolutely the most successful and has been... S- since I was 12 and probably before then, do you know what I mean? Like he's been the king of it all for as long as, as, as I, as I can remember hearing of him. Um, and I used to listen to his radio show all the time when I was 12. And I remember one time I went to one of their live events and I got him to sign my joke book, my little 12 year old joke book full of fucking cancer and shit. But uh, he signed it and it said Lewis Rocks or something and Dave Hughes. I still have it. I can't be bothered getting it out. But um, I, I finally got to tell him about it. I was backstage with him and I got to tell him. And it was something I've really wanted to tell him for a long time because I've always thought that I would like to hear that. And you know what? He, he loved it and then he fucking hated it. Because on one hand, I was like, I told him and I was like, hey man, it was really cool. You did this for me when I was 12 and I want you to know that, you know, comedy is now my job. And that was one of the coolest experiences for me when I was 12, when I, when 
you know, comedians were just my, my heroes kind of thing. That was a really cool thing that you did for me. And now it's my job. Um, and he loved that, but then he was like, fuck, I'm old. <laughs> like it reminded him that, that he met me when I was 12 and, and now we're talking and I'm an adult man. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was like, fuck, that was 10 years ago, more than 10 years. It would have been like 11 years ago that that happened. So he loved it and then he hated it because he just felt old, but I don't know. It was, it was cool. And, and he killed it too. It was very good to see him. Dave Hughes is fucking sick live. Um, I, if, if you don't like Husey, I recommend you see him live because, um, you know, you know, the whole thing with the mainstream media, when you're on TV and you're on radio, you can't swear, you can't say anything controversial, but when you, the beauty of stand up is you can kind of say whatever the fuck you want. Cause it's only ever going to be in front of like max 3000 people more likely around 500, which is what it was at the lounge. So yeah, I don't know that was, that was cool. Um, what else are we doing? Oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to, um, give a, I got an update from live below the line. Do you guys remember that? That fucking charity that wanted me as their ambassador for some reason. And then, and, and then I was like, look, I think this is a shit idea, but I'll, I'll give it a go. I don't, I don't get the feeling that my fans are the most charitable fucking people in the world, but yeah, you can put me on your website. We'll see how much money I raised. And then like three months after that, literally I had raised nothing <laughs> and I was the lowest, um, earning. Well, anyway, um, I told you guys that, uh, and thankfully you guys did, uh, step up and, uh, donate a little bit of money. Cause all I wanted was to not be the person who raised the least amount of money. Do you know what I mean? Like that's all that I wanted. So I'm going to have a, the, the campaign has now ended. I got a thank you email. I want to have a look and find out how much money I raised. And if I was the lowest amount, please don't let me be the lowest. That's all I want. I know I'm not going to raise the most, but just don't make me the lowest. All right. Okay. Where is the, what we want? Live below the line ambassadors. Let's find this shit. Live below the line ambassadors. All right. Okay. So there was some dude who, who knitted hats and he was beating me. He knitted hats on Instagram. I'm like, fuck, I can't get beaten by this cunt. There's no way he can raise more money than me. Like that's just, that's just embarrassing for me. All right. Give me a second. Let me bring this up and I'll find out and then we'll go through it. All right, I'm back. Magic of editing, huh? Never even noticed I was gone. I could have been gone 20 minutes. Could have been, this could be fucking recorded the next day. It's not. It took me two minutes. So to give you an idea of like like how much ambassadors have raised, there's a football player on here who's raised $15,000. And there's a home and away actress who's raised like 20, all right? 20 grand, okay? Now, then we get to me, okay? I haven't looked at the guy in the hat. Because from what I know, the guy in the hat was smashing me. He knits crochet hats, right? His profile picture is him wearing a fucking crochet burger. And I saw that and I was like, if this guy beats me, I don't know what I'm going to do. This, I can't let that happen. So, <clears throat> all right, this is how much money I raised. I haven't looked at how much he's raised. I So, footballer, $15,000. Home and away actress, $20,000. Me, 178, <laughs> which look compared to, to other amounts, pathetic, but you know, that's, that's a little bit of money to, for, for starving kids. You know, it's better than nothing. It's better than I thought I would do. Okay. So I raised $178. Please let me, I'm going to have a look at him now. Let's see how much the burger guy run, raised. All right. $21. Yes. I fucking smashed him. Oh, thank you very much, guys. Oh, there was no way I was going to let some dude in a crochet burger hat with like 10,000 Instagram followers beat me. Oh, good. Okay. See, really, my motivation for this was not to help any people at all. I just didn't want to lose. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, guys, for doing that. The very few of you who did. Um, okay. Okay. So now let's do miscellaneous bit at the end, and then I'm going to get into at the end of the podcast uh, this big project that I'm unveiling. All right, so miscellaneous bit at the end. We have an update email from last week. So if you remember last week, uh, I had an email from a guy who said yes 
to a girl when she asked him out, but he only did it to be polite. So I was kind of like, he wanted to know how to break up with her or how to reverse it. He didn't want to be with her. I told him, you can't tell her the truth. Like, there's no way you could tell a girl, oh, you know, sorry, I just didn't want to hurt your feelings. That'd crush her soul. So what I suggested is just come up with an excuse or a passion or an exam or, or, or some job or anything that's mildly important and just ampen up and say, I'm sorry, I need to focus on this thing. I don't have time for a girlfriend. It's a mistake. I don't want to get involved with somebody who I can't give my full attention to, right? Because that's so much, that's a much better way of getting dumped like on day two than, ah, look, I never liked you. Just didn't want to hurt your feelings because, you know, you look like a bit of a sad bitch. Like that's way better. Anyway, he heard the podcast and <clears throat> it was weird, like literally... I put the podcast up and no shit, or an hour almost exactly went by. So he listened to it and then he immediately acted and he sent me this follow-up email. It was, it was quite weird how quickly he, he listened to my advice. Like he didn't even, he didn't even give it a thought. He's like, yep, that's right. I'm doing it. Makes me, makes me wonder what I should fucking say to people. Uh, all right. So this is what he emailed in. He said, hi, Lou. Thanks for the help. You lanky cunt. Uh, good on you. Uh, I did exactly what you told me to, and it seemed to work. (laughs) She said, maybe next year. But she also said we might not like each other then, so I've bought myself half a year before she tries to make something work again. At least now I know for next time. Cheers, Sam. Uh, Sent from my iPod. Who's sending emails on an iPod? That sounds horrible. I'm getting distracted. Yeah, well, I'm glad that that worked. And, um, yeah, you just need to be... You just need to be vigilant. And you know what? It's kind of good that she said, oh, we might not like each other then because, because now you can, you can, when, if she tries again, you can let her down and you can say that I, I I have my eyes on somebody else. Sorry. Um, and then that is so much better than the excuse you have now, because you know, you could be like, oh, look, yeah, because even if she calls you on your bullshit, and he's like, look, I watched you for six months and your habits have not changed at all. You're not studying any harder or whatever excuse you used. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're not going to swimming practice. What are you talking about? You, you said you're, a, you're an Olympic swimmer now. You know, you, you don't even own a swimming cap. You, you just lied to me. Like, if she comes back at you with that and she tries again and then she's like, look, I know that you're not you don't care about this thing. So obviously we must have time for each other now. Just be like, oh, I'm sorry. I've got my eyes on someone else. And then that, then, then it's done and you'll never have to worry about it again. All right. Good on you, Sam. You fucking iPod emails. All right. We've got, a, we've got another question here. Um, so the subject line for this is uh, dating good friends X and he doesn't know about it. Oh, you're a cunt. I'm sorry. I haven't read the email. I don't know what's coming, but uh, I'm already leaning towards you being a bit of an asshole. A bit of an inconsiderate person. Hey, Lou, I never thought I'd contribute to the worst part of the podcast and a mass suicide, but I need some advice. Call me Tim. All righty, Timmy. Um, Recently, I started dating this girl called Bella. Her and I have known each other for a little while now, however, only became really close after we graduated school at the end of last year. I'd say before, I'd say before we began dating recently, she was my closest friend. Okay, so before you were dating, you were really good friends. Yeah, but why were you friends? Were you friends because your mate was fucking her and you couldn't, and you couldn't, huh? Is, Is that why you were best friends? Because every now and then you touch her arm and you get, woo, woo. <laughs> you get that feeling. Uh, you've been a bit of a vulture, mate. You're just waiting for that that relationship to die so you can just feed on its carcass. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I, I'm, I'm prejudging you. I haven't read the, this email. I'm, we're only one paragraph in. There's a couple. You know, we'll, we'll see. Uh, My other friend Brian and I met recently when completing a fitness certificate and we became really good mates through that. I introduced Brian to Bella at my birthday dinner. How I didn't just introduce them, I made jokes about them dating. Oh, okay. So you wingmaned your friend. Oh, you redeemed a bit in my eyes. A little bit of redemption here. So you met her when she was single and you set your mates up together. Okay. 
All right. And you were friends with her first, is what I'm getting. Okay. So look, you might not be in. A, okay. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna stop judging you. I'm gonna read the rest of the email. Um, I didn't just introduce them. I wingman them. Blah blah blah. Uh, after my birthday, they hit it off, which was fine by me. Eventually, they started dating, and I would deem myself responsible for encouraging them to hook up. Yep. So you're just a wingman. Good on you. However, when they started dating, I realized I had friends for Bella. You just did the classic. Yeah, yeah I can't have it. So now I want it. Yeah, what's he got that I don't have? Why, why, why wouldn't she? Why wouldn't she date me? I've been, I've been the best mate all the time. Just because some new guy comes to me, I mean, why? I want to, I want to kiss her. <laughs> You've just done that thing. I can't have it, so now I want it. Um, I tried to suppress my feelings for her because I knew it wasn't right. I was feeling, I was feeling that way, especially with a good mate dating her. I tried meeting other girls and speaking to them. However, they didn't interest me that much. During her relationship with Brian, she started flirting with me and I guess it takes two to tango. I could tell she obviously had some feelings for me, even though she was with Brian and I felt the same. Yeah, so you set her up with Brian and then you just started to dog him. You both dogged Brian. I feel sorry for Brian. It's that kind of thing where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards you maybe not being a, a shit cunt. You just probably didn't know you, your feelings. Neither of you did. And and it's only one. Yeah, you know, it's the, it's the thing. What I was saying before is like once you don't know what you have till it's gone. And once that, that opportunity to date someone is gone, then you realize, fuck, I should have taken that, hey. Um, blah, blah. Uh, she kind of had feelings for me. Anyway, fast forward two months, Brian and Bella broke up on good terms because she wanted to focus on uni and a few, he put focus on uni in quotation marks, aka meaning he did the, ex- she did the exact same thing that I told this guy, the other guy to do, which is, oh, I'm, I'm just too busy for a relationship. And then you go and jump on a bunch of other dicks. That's what she's done to him. So, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, but that that's not very good for your predicament because if you want to if you start dating her, then your mate is immediately going to realize, oh fuck, she is not busy with uni. She just wanted to fuck my friend. My friend's an asshole. Uh, okay, because she wanted to focus on uni and and and, and other few reasons. <clears throat> Couple days later, Bella and I went to the beach. I confessed my feelings for her, and she reciprocated. Uh, big word. We hooked up a few times since then, and we're pretty much dating now. This all happened very recently, and only a really close circle of friends know, none of which are friends of Brian's. I like this girl a lot, and I've essentially decided that I value starting a serious relationship with her more than I value my friendship with Brian. Well, at least you know. I know what I've done is pretty dog, and this whole situation probably reflects on reflects even more poorly on Bella. Yeah, yeah, it does. I think I think from an outside perspective, she... Because, you know, maybe she liked you all along and was just never vocal about it and you were too stupid to notice. Because that happens sometimes, especially with, with girls. Oh, I really like him. I'm just going to sit here and wait for him to ask me out. Ladies, if you're listening, it's not that hard. If you like a dude and you've liked them for like over a month and they just see you as friends, just give it a go because sometimes we are that fucking thick that we don't even realize that there's tension there. Just give it a go. See what happens. You might get a root out of it. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Where are we? Uh, probably reflects even more poorly on Bella. Nonetheless, I still have not told Brian about what's happened between me and Bella, and I haven't really spoken to him since it's happened. I still consider him a good friend. However, I've basically concluded that if someone did to me what I did to him, I would never want to speak to them again. Yeah, I I would feel the same. I think you're right. Should I tell him what's happened between us? If so, how should I go about it? I know I deserve to be punched in the face. However... I'd like to escape telling him injury free. Uh, thanks in advance for the advice. I'm a long-term listener of the potty and I look forward to seeing you in Brisbane next year. Yeah, I'll definitely be back in Brizzy. Uh, I will. Keep up the good work. Have a shit one, Tim. Sent from my iPhone. That's a step up from an iPod. Um, fuck, that's a hard one. Okay, look, I think you, you realize you're definitely going to lose a friend out of this one, but obviously you don't really care about that and it sounds like Bella doesn't either. So- so, I don't know how you would, you have to, I think you do have to tell him. Or you could just let him find out. 
Nah, if you're friends, you have to tell him. Fuck, I don't know how you, I don't know how you would do it. I would, do you do it in person? I don't know. I, I, uh, okay, here we go. This is, the, this is what I would say. Okay, I reckon you, you, obviously, you have to tell him. So, I would either, if you're a bit of a pussy, and you really don't want to save, and you, like this one, this is an option. But it's definitely the more dog option. It's the pussy option. And uh, you're absolutely going to lose him. And it'll piss him off more. But there's potential that you'll never have any repercussions. You have to cut him out of your life. Do it. You can give him a phone call. You just give him a call and say, hey, man, explain what happened. Just how you told me. Oh, I liked her before you met her. And then blah, blah, whatever. And then he, you know, if he, if he cracks it at you, it doesn't matter. It's over the phone. He can't get to you. He'll probably cool down by the time, you know, you, you, you'll next see each other in like a mutual friend setting. So, yeah. But you'll forever be the guy who fucked your friend's girlfriend and then told him over the phone like a dog and a pussy, right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I... Oh, Look, at the end of the day, I don't know this guy. If he if he if he is prone to losing it, and if he if he's a guy that you think could fucking rage at you, I'd do it over the phone. But if he's like a reasonable guy, I would do it in person, but in in like a public place, like in a I don't know. You you guys sound like you go to school together. I don't know. Or do it, I don't know, just do it in in a public place where you're around other friends. Like if you're with like a few friends, just. Do it there, or if you're in like a library, or if you're in the city, or I don't know, a public place. Don't go to his house and tell him because he might pull out the knife and fucking kill you. No one can help you. But do it in public and say, hey man, I want to let you know, and just be honest. I think whatever happens, whether you do it over the phone like a like a wimp, or you do it in person like a stand up guy, I would just be honest um, and basically tell you what you tell him what you told me. Um, it does kind of suck that he got dumped. And yeah, you're totally right. It's very obvious what Bella has done. Is she's is she's she's basically going, Oh, I'm gonna date this guy. Oh no, I actually like Tim. That's what's happened. Oh, or you could get her to tell. You know what? I think it's I think it's probably more Is it her is it her responsibility? Fuck, that's another option. You can get her to tell him. You know, oh, I don't know. This is that's another thing. No, nah, you know what? It's he's your friend. You should tell. Yeah, you should tell him. I'm going back to my original answer. Either call him uh, and do the do the wimp move, or do it in person. You should be the one to tell him, and um, maybe have her with you. I don't know. Nah, don't. Yeah, you you just got to tell him. All right, that's my answer, and it's not a perfect answer because it's just a fuck situation. But that's what I think. That's what I would do. But let me know how this goes. I'm very interested. Please do send a follow-up email. Whatever you choose to do, no judgment. Send it through and I'll read it out. I'd love to hear the follow-up to it. All right, that's the end of Miss Lane's bit at the end. Now, I want to talk to you about this project that's coming up. So I don't really know how to talk about this because, okay, basically it's the scariest thing that I've ever done. And it's the most important thing that I've ever done with my career. It's more important than a tour. It's more important than a new video series. Or if it's just the most important thing that I've that I've ever done in my life. And it's a really, really, really big risk. And for it to work, I need your help. And 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 no, it's very easy to to listen to this and be like, oh yeah, by you he means like the fan base. So other people, no, I'm I mean you. The person listening to this, because most of the time people listen to podcasts by themselves. The person listening to this, not my fans, right? Not, not however many other people you think listen to this. I'm talking to you on the train, in your office, at home, wherever the fuck you are. The one person listening to this. On Tuesday, I'm going to be making a huge announcement at 7.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, Melbourne time. And I need your help 
All I ask is that you have $5 ready. Just $5. Don't promise it to me. Don't don't or don't fucking have it ready. Don't commit to giving it to me. All I want is for you to have $5 in PayPal or in your card or however month, however you spend money online. Just have five between $5, $15 whatever you can spare, just have $5 ready and have an open mind to listen to what I have to announce and to what I'm asking from you. That's all I want. I'm going to be putting out on Tuesday an extra podcast episode. It's going to be very short and it's going to be officially announcing this project. I'm also going to be putting out a video on Tuesday at 7.30 and I'm going to be Doing, I'm just going to be doing, I'm just going to be making a huge fucking amount of noise. And all I ask is that you have $5, $10, $15, five bucks minimum. Just have that in your bank account, ready to go. Have an open mind and just listen. And if you want to help me do this thing that I'm trying to do, send it my way. All right, 7.30, Tuesday, Australian Eastern Standard Time. Have five bucks, an open mind, and keep an eye out. All right, I'll talk to you on Tuesday. I'm very nervous about it, but um, to the person listening to this, I trust you. Okay, that's it. It's the end of the podcast. I'll talk to you on Tuesday. Have a shit one.